right, um, welcome, welcome, in, welcome, welcome, great dear friends, welcome. I think we're good to go right now. Thank you very much for joining me this evening. All right, once again, my name is Amazi Kechuku Onoha. I know I'm showing more of me these days on Facebook. Um, there's a reason for that. I don't show myself often these days on Facebook to come and gossip, no. It is a new year resolution. And what ha why have I taken that resolution? Our little Mazen Nam the Kano is still incarcerated. He is still in jail. So I cannot limit my broadcast time only to when I go on radio. Now I have to do more than that. And I felt every spare minute, every spare time I have, I have to come to Facebook, of course, to interact with dear friends and to do the needful. And this is why you see more of me all the time on Facebook. I am doing more extra to what I used to do. I broadcast like once a week, twice a week sometimes due to my commitment. But then I say to myself, when I'm not broadcasting, if I have any opportunity or any time, I should come out on Facebook and speak to dear friends and of course do the, the needful. All right, as you all know, our leader is going to be in court this month. Um, so I felt it is very, very important that I come out this evening and touch on that and, of course, inform you what to expect. Uh, very, very important because many people are asking questions. So what are we to expect in our leader's next appearance in Abuja uh, High Court, especially this month? All right, we must continue. Thank you very much. So, from my legal background, from my legal background, that's when you're like, we home, say what you know. From my legal background, now this is what I think we should expect if the court sits, you know, in the next court appearance. As you all know, uh, the president of the zoo, um, whoever is there in Asorok, have come out to say that he cannot do anything that is going to leave everything in the hands of the courts. No problem, fair enough. If he meant what he said, that he's going to leave everything in the hands of the courts, then we have nothing to worry about. Because the zoo called Nigeria has no case against Mazenam de Khan. That I can tell you from my experience and from my legal background and based on the charges. And when I say charges, I'm talking about the trumped up charges against Mazenam de Khan. Those charges cannot stand in any competent courts. Now, to start with, we all know how our leader ended up in the zoo called Nigeria and how he ended up in that court of Bintan Nyako. He was kidnapped, abducted in Kenya, and then, of course, radiated back to Nigeria to stand the legal trial. So that on its own, of course, we all know about it. That radiation cannot stand because it is a crime against humanity. The rendition of Mazenam de Kano from Kenya to the zoo called Nigeria already has broken the chain of events. It has taken away jurisdiction from the zoo called Nigeria. For that reason, Abuja High Court has no jurisdiction to try Mazenam de Kano. That is the starter. I know you've heard our lawyers talk about trial within trial. So when they talk about trial within trial, they are trying to put to test the legality of the abduction of Mazenam de Kano. They are trying to put to test the legality of Binta Nyako's court trying Mazenam de Kano. And there is a legal question here. And that legal question is very simple. Can Binta Nyako try Mazenam de Kano? And of course, when I say Binta Nyako, I'm talking about Abuja High Court because Abuja High Court is known as Binta Nyako's court. That is the way it is recognized legally. So the question is, can Binta Nyako's court try Mazenam de Kano? Does Binta Nyako's court have jurisdiction to try Mazenam de Kano? Ask every person you know, any legal person. Ask all the sons in Nigeria. Ask all the intellectuals in Nigeria. This is a simple question. Where on earth did Binta Nyako's court got the jurisdiction to sit and administer justice over Mazen Namdekano's matter? 
Is she competent enough to adjudicate the matter? Because in order for a court, don't, don't, don't forget this, in order for a court to have jurisdiction to try a matter, or should I put it this way, in order for a court to sit over a matter, that court must have what? Jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is what empowers a court of law to try a matter. If a court does not have jurisdiction, it cannot try a matter. So, this is why when you commit a crime in our nature, you cannot go to Enugu to stand trial. When you commit a crime, a, a crime in Enugu, you cannot go to Owere Imo State to stand trial because Owere Imo State does not have jurisdiction over the matter, over the crime that you committed in our nature. Our nature magistrate courts, depending on the level of the offense you committed, is the one that is embodied with jurisdiction to sit over your matter. I'm trying to build a background and of course explain to you what is jurisdiction and what informs the power of a court to try a matter. A court cannot try a matter that it does not have a jurisdiction over. If a court ignores the jurisdiction processes and go ahead and try a matter, it becomes a mistrial. I don't know if I'm making sense. It becomes a mistrial. So, in the case of our leader, Mazi Nam Dekano, he was abducted in Kenya, rendiated to the Sukhon, Nigeria, which is called extraordinary rendition. Based on that alone, the zoo has committed a crime against humanity because according to the United Nations Charter, extraordinary rendition is a crime or is seen to be a crime against humanity. So if the zoo violated an international law in a bid to push and bring Mazinam the Kano to the zoo called Nigeria, that alone is enough. Why do I say that? Because the zoo you know practice international law, they adhere to international law treaties and convention. So any rule that involves international world, international laws, affects the zoo. So the zoo cannot commit extraordinary rendition against Mazen Namdekano and still expect to have jurisdiction over his matter. It does not work like that in a developed world, in a civilized world. So that is why I was asking that question. Does Binta Nyako have the right? Let me put the right aside, but let's use a legal term. Does Binta Nyako have jurisdiction to try Mazen Namdekano's matter? And the answer is what? No. Because there has to be a nexus. There has to be what? a nexus between a court of law and the suspect or alleged suspect in order for that competent court to exercise that jurisdiction over that suspect and try the matter. Now, what confirms a court with jurisdiction? That's a question. And it's a legal question which we must answer now. What confirms a court with jurisdiction? The only thing that confirms a court with jurisdiction is the fact that the crime was committed in that court area of jurisdiction. The crime must be committed in that court area of jurisdiction in order for that court to be confirmed with jurisdiction. In order for there to be a nexus between the court and the crime in question. All right, we must continue. So, what I'm asking now is a very simple question. Does Binta Nyako's court have jurisdiction to try Mazen Nam the Kano? And of course, the answer is no, a capital no, because Binta Nyako does not have jurisdiction. Now, forget about what happened historically. Forget about the bail that was granted to Mazen Nam Kano in that same court. It does not come into play now. Why do I say that? That was forfeited the day the military of the zoo went to Mazen Nam Kano's home to kill him. And then of course he has to make room for his life. As soon as they committed that offense, the military of the zoo called Nigeria, it broke the chain of events. It broke the chain of events. So remember, there is what you call chain 
of evidence, chain of events. Because Mazen Nam the Kano in 2015, and I want you to pay close attention. In 2015, Mazen Nam the Kano was tried in Bintan Nyako's courts. And he got bail. Now, that bail that Mazen Nam the Kano got from Bintan Nyako's court in 2015 connected Mazen Nam the Kano and Bintan Nyako's court. It formed a nasus. It gave Bintan Nyako jurisdiction over Mazen Nam the Kano. Now, while Mazen Nam the Kano was busy enjoying that bail that he got from Bintan Nyako, the Nigeria military, the Zoo Army, strike and went to his father's compound to kill him. They end up killing 28 people, and Mazen Nam the Kano ran for his life. Immediately, they committed that offense. It broke that chain of events. It broke that nasus. It broke that jurisdiction. It takes away jurisdiction from being the Nyako's court. Do you understand that? So from that moment, Mazen Nam the Kano left the zoo running for his life. Binta Nyako does not have jurisdiction anymore over Mazen Nam the Kano. Now let's look, let's look at the abduction in Kenya. The abduction in Kenya opened a new chapter. It is a completely different matter altogether. It has no connection with the case of 2015. None at all. Why do I say that? Because the chain of events was broken in 2015 when the army went to kill Mazen Nam the Kano and he ran for his, for his life. That was when Binta Nyako lost all jurisdiction over Mazen Nam the Kano. So let's look at recent. I've told you about the past because some of you might ask a question and say, but Binta Nyako tried the Mazen Nam the Kano in 2015. So why, what are you saying? Why do you say that she doesn't have jurisdiction? So I was trying to explain to you how she lost that jurisdiction of 2015. The army of the zoo helped her to lose, lose that jurisdiction because the army went there to kill Mazen Nam the Khan when he was enjoying the bail he got from Binta Nyako in 2015. And that bail was the jurisdiction that Binta Nyako's court had over Mazen Nam the Khan. That bail Mazen Nam the Khan got in Abuja High Court in 2015 was the nexus, the connection between Mazen Nam the Khan and that honorable court. But as soon as the army interfered with that bail, Binta Nyako's court lost jurisdiction over Mazen Nam the Khan. I hope we have got that out of the way. So let's go back to Kenya. Mazen Nam the Khan was in Kenya, a different country, a country that is independent, a country that has no connection with the zoo called Nigeria at all. In order for Nigeria to go to Kenya to bring Mazen Nam the Khan home, they have to apply for his extradition. That is if the zoo called Nigeria and Kenya have an extradition treaty. I don't know if I'm making sense. If the zoo called Nigeria and uh, Kenya had an extradition treaty, what the zoo called Nigeria would have done is to apply for extradition from Kenya to the zoo called Nigeria. But they did not do that. Rather, they went behind the back door and abducted him kidnapped him and brought him back to the zoo called Nigeria, thereby violating international law and treaty. That is why it's called extraordinary rendition, which is a crime against humanity. You cannot do it. You are not allowed to do it under international law. And this international law we're talking about, the zoo called Nigeria, is a signatory to this law. So if the zoo is a signatory to this international law, and they violate the same law. There has to be consequences. There has to be consequences and there has to be penalty for the violation of that law that the zoo called Nigeria actually violated, trying to abduct and bring bad man's and they cannot back to the zoo to stand trial. So because the zoo went behind through the back door to bring man's and they cannot back to the zoo, not through the rule of law, not through the means of legality, but through backdoor automatically automatically revoke anything called jurisdiction they cannot take him to abuja high court and say okay now you're going to stand trial no he cannot stand trial because remember in order for trial to commence you have to explain to us how you got this man to that court it's very very important 
It is called principle of legality. Principle of legality has to kick in. How did you bring him back to that court? Did you follow the right source? Did you follow you know, the right channel? If you did not, then he cannot stand trial in Abuja High Court. Understand what I'm trying to explain here. That Mazat Nam the Kano has no reason whatsoever standing trial in Binta Nyako's court. It amazes me when the court keep on postponing. But I kept quiet because of the fact that there hasn't been any trial so far. It has been postponement after postponement. Because once the trial commences in that court, it is long, wrong. It is wrong. Once the trial commenced in Abuja High Court against Mazin Namdekano, it's a violation, a gross violation of his fundamental human right. Because you are trying him without a jurisdiction. There is no connection. As a matter of fact, Mazin Namdekano is not a citizen of Abuja High Court. What do I mean by a citizen of Abuja High Court? He's not a local peregrine, like they call it in law. He's not a local Peregrini. As a matter of fact, he's a foreign peregrini. For the fact, don't forget, Nazanam the Khan came to Kenya with a foreign passport. He came with his British passport, his British citizen. He is not a local citizen of Abuja High Court. And therefore, Abuja does not have any nexus or any connection or any jurisdiction over Nazanam the Khan in order to try him. So I've cleared that and I've gotten that out of the way. Trying to make you understand that Abuja High Court has no right whatsoever to try Mazen Namdekano. Binta Nyako cannot exercise any jurisdiction because in law, in order for you to try or hear a matter as a court, you must have jurisdiction. And if you don't have it, then that trial is flawed. It is a mistrial. It cannot stand. With that out of the way, Let's look into the charges that were trumped up against Mazen Namdekano. And I want you to understand that those trials are dead on arrival. First of all, one of the trials is said that you, Mazen Namdekano, broadcast in London. I want you to pay close attention. That you, Mazen Namdekano, was broadcasting in London, United Kingdom, which was transmitted in the zoo called Nigeria. Monitored in Enugu. <laughs> Are you listening? They said, you Mazen Nam the Kano broadcasted in the United Kingdom on Radio Biafra, which was monitored in Enugu. I don't know if you're getting this. Now my question is, if he broadcasted in London, United Kingdom, it means that the scene of crime is in London, United Kingdom. If you need to charge him to court, he needs to go to court in the United Kingdom because that's where Radio Biafra was and that was where he made the broadcast. How can somebody broadcast in South Africa, like Mazike Chukono, I am busy broadcasting in South Africa, and then you arrest me and go and try me in Nigeria? And when they ask you, what is the offense of Mazen Nam the Khan? I mean, I beg your pardon. What is the offense of Mazike Chukonoha? You said, no, Mazike Chukonoha was broadcasting in South Africa. That is why we are trying him in Nigeria. It is wrong. It is wrong. It is oxymoron. It is oxymoron. It is not done anywhere in the world. If you feel that I broadcasted in South Africa and have committed an offense by broadcasting, on South African airways, immaterial wherever it was heard, because even television here in South Africa, if you want to get it in the zoo called Nigeria, you can get it. If you get the right connection, if you get the right dish, the right satellite, you can monitor a, a broadcast that was committed in South Africa, that was broadcast in South Africa. That does not mean it was done in the zoo. It was done in South Africa. And you cannot arrest the guy who spoke in South Africa and try him in Nigeria. It is crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. If you feel that during my broadcast in South Africa, that I have spoken some evil, that I have done some rubbish, I've, say, I've said some certain nonsense over my broadcast, what you need to do is very simple. You can apply for my work extradition. 
You can ask the African government to bring Mazi Ketuku on her back to the zoo in order for him to do what? To stand trial for broadcasting in South Africa. You are not going to say no. We monitored the broadcast or we recorded it in Abuja. For that reason, he must come to Abuja to stand trial. It does not work like that. That is not how the rule of law works. That is not how the rule of law works. I don't know if you understand. That is what you call the sin of crime. That is what you call the sin of crime. Where the crime was committed is very, very important. The sin of crime is another thing that links up a suspect, that links up the crime, that links up the, you know, the matter in question with the local courts where the, sin, the thing was committed. So that the local court can now exercise jurisdiction over the matter because the events happened in that area of that court jurisdiction. So tell me, how did a broadcast that happened in the UK, United Kingdom, give Abuja High Court jurisdiction? I don't understand. So what about the United Kingdom Magistrate Court or High Court? What about United Kingdom, the city, the town? The country where the alleged crime happened how come they don't get the jurisdiction how come they don't get the opportunity to try the matter rather a court without jurisdiction is the one now who is sitting comfortably trying a matter that has nothing to do with them does it make sense to you be friends so i want you to understand why all those charges against Mazen Nam the Kano will not stand the taste of time? It will not stand the day in court. As a matter of fact, all the charges against Mazen Nam the Kano is the same thing. All the charges against him told the same lie. They said on so 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 dates, you were broadcast in the United Kingdom and it was monitored in Enugu. Okay, fine. For that sake, let's say it was monitored in Enugu. How come he's not standing trial in Enugu? Why Abuja? Does it make sense? How come he did not stand trial in Enugu, but rather he is standing trial in Abuja? Yet you said you monitored the broadcast in Enugu and the crime itself was committed in the United Kingdom. So that is why when Buhari said, that he's not going to get involved in Mazen Nam Dekano's matter. He's not going to get involved in the issue of our leader Mazen Nam Dekano, that he would allow it in the hands of the court. I said, beautiful. It is only a layman who will be upset or angry that the president of Benazu say he's not going to get involved. We are not afraid of the court. We are not afraid of the zoo court. Okay, like my brother Monday Onyeka said, if you use DSTV channel, you will get South African you know, uh, TV channels. You will get ENCA, if you're using DSTV and you're in the zoo called Nigeria. You can get um, SABC, that is here in South Africa. What other channel do we have here in South Africa? I think it's basically um, SABC and uh, ETV and ENCA. So now you use DSTV and you watch me, Mazi Kechukonoha, talking, talking on a channel of South African television. And when I finish talking, then you come and abduct me and bring me back to the zoo. And you said, I'm standing trial for what I said in South Africa. And because you watched me on DSTV, then now automatically you have jurisdiction to hear the matter. Is that not crazy? Is that not crazy? Who does that? Who speaks like that? If you felt that I've said something wrong on South African television, all you have to do is very simple. You can apply for extradition. Ask them to bring me back home and then I will go to court here in South Africa. If South African court feels that yes, Nigerian government have a case against me, I need to go back home and answer, then they will extradite me back to Nigeria. That is how it works. So I want you to understand by the main fact of jurisdiction that Binta Nyako's court has lost this case already, even on arrival. The charges that were trumped up against Mazen Nam the Kano, they hold no water. There is no such. Okay, here in South Africa, this is what we do. Here in South Africa, this is what we do. 
<laughs> okay, I, I want to read what his uh, brother said, but Betelo Siri said, Mazi Kechuku, we IPOB don't know that Nigeria is one one of the biggest streets in the United Kingdom now, but the UK refused to change Nigeria passport to UK as a one street in UK. Okay, what he's trying to say is this, because what Nigeria is saying, basically, is like this, the crime that was committed in the, in the UK, you know, it's also a crime that was committed in the zoo called Nigeria. So if you're in the UK and you call President Buhari a thief, then of course Nigeria can arrest you and bring you back to Nigeria to try the matter or hear the matter. They automatically get jurisdiction. But it does not work like that. This is the rule of law. And the rule of law says there is what you call jurisdiction. And there is what you call scene of crime where the incident happened. That is why when you have an accident in Okota in Lagos, you don't go to Okoko to go and open a case. You must open that case in Okota because Okota police station are the one that have jurisdiction over the accident that happens in what? In Okota. You can't go to Okoko Maiko and say, listen, I had an accident in Okota, but because it's busy there, can I please open a case in Okoko? It does not work like that. They will not agree with you. They will not allow you. The same way is how the court operates. And you listen to me. That is the same way the court operates. But you know in the zoo called Nigeria, police will all the way from Lagos go to Onecha and apprehend a businessman and take him back to Lagos. It is wrong. It is not allowed. It is oxymoron. You don't do that. DSS will come all the way from Abuja to Onicha, arrest somebody, bungle him, put him in a plane, and take him back to Abuja. You don't do that. If you arrest somebody in Oweri because he committed a crime in Oweri, you take him to a police station. From Oweri police station, then he will go to court, you know, where high court or you know, where magistrate court, depending on the level of the crime he committed. That is how it works. It is the rule of law. It is the lower court and the higher court. And the same thing applies to area of jurisdiction. Do you understand? So, the whole thing of uh, Mazinam, the Kano going to Bintanyako's court to stand a trial is oxymoron. It does not work like that. It is against the rule of law. It is against the rule of legality. Nowhere in the world has something like that happened. The only way Mazen Namde Kano can stand trial in any zoo court is by means of extradition. If Nigeria have any extradition agreement with such country like the UK, they can apply to the United Kingdom and say, bring back Mazen Namde Kano to the zoo called Nigeria so that he can stand trial. That is the only way Mazen Namde Kano can stand in any court in Nigeria. For his matter to be heard. No extradition was applied for. No extradition was granted. He was kidnapped. He was abducted through the back door. They bungled him from Kenya to the zoo called Nigeria. Extraordinary rendition. A crime against humanity. A crime forbidden by United Kingdom. I saw that, beg your pardon, a crime forbidden by United Nations. And today, the same man is standing trial. The same man is standing trial in the zoo. When the zoo is benefiting from their crime, the zoo Nigeria committed a crime against Mazenam de Kano. They abuse his fundamental human rights. Instead of the zoo to be standing trial, Mazenam de Kano is now the one standing trial for a crime committed by the zoo called Nigeria. Do you see injustice? So what I want to assure you upon this evening is that come this January that our leader is attending his uh, uh, court case in Abuja High Court, there is no cause for alarm. Trust me, there is no cause for alarm. I can tell you our case is watertight. Remember, we don't have anything to prove. The defense team has nothing to prove. Mazen Nam, the Kami legal team, has nothing to prove. Because the law says that he who alleges must be able to substantiate that, that they alleges. They are the one who are alleging all manner of rubbish against Mazen Nam, the Kami. They have to come to court and prove their case beyond all reasonable doubt. Beyond all reasonable doubt is more like proving your case 100%. 
And if you cannot prove your case 100% and 1% is missing out of that 100% and then the zoo proved their case 99%, the law says that the accused must be given a benefit of the doubt with that 1% and he can be acquitted because the defense did not discharge the onus of proof, the burden of proof beyond all reasonable doubt. Now, before I close, let me talk about this one charge which was preferred against Mazen Abdekano, also by the zoo. And it's very, very interesting and very, very funny. They say that on so so date, you Mazen Abdekano broadcasted in London, United Kingdom again, which was monitored in Enugu. In that broadcast, you called the president of the Republic of Nigeria a pedophile. So for that reason, you have committed a crime known unto law. Now my question is, we are in Nigerian constitution. We are in Nigerian constitution. Did it say that if you swore at the president, that if you call the president of a country name, that you will be charged? Under which law? Under which section? What subsection? I need somebody to tell me, please. Maybe it's an oversight, because I've searched the zoo constitution. I've searched the zoo, the zoo legislation. I don't see where it says that if you abuse the president of Nigeria, that you have committed a crime, and therefore you will be tried. As a matter of fact, the president, like me and you, also have the right to sue somebody and to be sued as well. He's a normal human being. When he comes with personality, he can sue people and people can sue him. If he felt that somebody had insulted him or somebody had called him name, it is called criminal injuria. Criminal injuria is more like deformation of character. Criminal injuria. He can sue Mazin Nam de Kano. Buhari can sue Mazin Nam de Kano in his personal capacity as an individual, as a person, not as a president of Nigeria, for deformation of character, for criminal injuria. The state cannot sue you on behalf of Buhari. It is not done. It is not done. It is not in any law. As a matter of fact, you can go and bring that useless constitution of the zoo, search from section one to the whole subsections in that rubbish zoo, you know, uh, um, constitution. You will not find a place where it said that if you abuse the president, if you swear at the president, if you curse the president, you have committed an offense. There is no such crime, no, no, under law. And you cannot charge somebody for something that is not a law. You cannot charge somebody for something that is not known in law. Any charges you have to bring against anybody must be something that is known by the law to be a crime, a transgression against the legislation, a transgression against a section of the legislation, a transgression against the rules of the country. Criminal injuria is an offense. But the person that is claiming that the criminal injuria was directed at him is the same person that is allowed or must bring the same to a competent court of law to hear. So Buhari must go and sue Mazen Nam Kano in his personal capacity as a president of Nigeria. He must go and sue Mazen Nam Kano. It is not done that the country will sue somebody on your behalf as a president. It is not done. The president of France was slapped. Somebody slapped a whole president of France and nothing happened. The president can decide if he want to take a, you know, a civil action, assault action, you know, assault GBH, Assault with intention to commit grievous bodily harm. They can decide to take a, you know, a case of a criminal injury against this individual, and then of course.